Okay, this little tree that I'm focusing on right here, you'll notice that it has the three leaves, the three lobe leaf here. It's also got oblong leaves. And for example, here it has a mitten shaped leaf. This is a sassafras tree. And uh, not something that a lot of people are going to be familiar with. They get pretty big. But the thing about this tree is, if you'll look right down here at the root, if you dig that up, there the roots under there are actually bigger than you, you would expect them to be. They're pulpy almost. Uh, you dig that up, you put that in a pot with some water. Boil it until you get a nice brown liquid and you'll start to get a smell from your pot that smells a lot like root beer. Well, there's a good reason for that. We call it sassafras tea around here, and unfortunately it's carcinogenic, so you, <laughs> they, I don't drink it anymore. I did when I was a child. My mom made it a couple of times. But it tastes exactly like root beer. You put some sugar in it, it tastes exactly like root beer. Uh, except it's not carbonated unless you carbonate it yourself, but thought that might be an interesting thing for people who are not familiar with this plant to hear. In this area here, I'm going to try and find some, if I have, there's another sassafras tree over here. Uh, we have wild grapes that grow around here. And uh, here, uh, I found one. This right here, now I'm not a you know, a bot uh, botanical specialist or anything. But this is a grapevine. It grows wild around here and has been since time immemorial. Um, we have Mustang grapes around here. Uh, that's a tough skinned grape, green in color when it's, or dark green to purple in color when it's ripe. We also have uh, muscadine grapes that grow wild around here. And, uh, that term muscadine is where you get the term muscatel from, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, I could be. I'm no wine expert either. <laughs> Don't really know much about wine, to tell you the truth. But I believe that's where you, you get muscatel wine from. And uh, there are a lot of plants like that around here that they... Uh, I'm probably filming multiple plants right now that could provide a sustainable living for at least one person uh, if he just knew what to look for. We have a uh, oh, skunk cabbage around here. Smells when you cook it, but hey, you know, it's edible. And uh, don't see any around here, but we have, uh, oh, there are a lot of other plants you can eat. Oh, that right there, that's a pretty good sized, uh, let's see, right about there is the top of the tree, right there. That's another uh, sassafras tree. <clears throat> now this plant over here I'm walking towards, trying to keep the ca steady, camera steady here because I'm on foot in the woods and it's just my cell phone, but... I believe, and I could be wrong again, I believe that this plant right here is American Beauty Berry. And you'll find it in places like like this out here. And it, it grows in places where there's a border between light and shadow. It's it, That's where it, it likes to grow the most. And uh, oh, just so you can see, all of this greenery right out here, this, this whole line here and everything green you see pretty much, past this little plant right here. That's all grapevines. Um, tons and tons and tons of grapes every year that are just left out here for the wildlife. Um, most, a lot of people don't even know they're here unless they're from this area. There's a little yellow flower here. My daughter will like this picture. 
these grow all over the place out here. I wish I had been able, had thought to stop and get pictures of the, those big mushrooms back there growing in the road, right in the middle of the road where I was driving. They're probably six, eight inches in diameter and probably that tall, a little taller. Um, but this is the background, by the backwoods of East Texas. Um, most people look at Texas, especially if you're not from the United States. A lot of you, you say Texas, people think what you see in the movies, the dry climate and the tumbleweeds and everything. But over here on the eastern side of Texas, you get into the great piney woods that extend from here, basically on the, all the way to the east coast. Up oh, there's my scooter, my cheap little Chinese scooter. Uh, there are things out here, I'm sure, that have not even been seen before, discovered the things that could be used for medicinal purposes. For example, there's a plant that grows out here. <clears throat> it's a three, I think it's a three-lobed plant. It comes up with a, a single stalk up from the ground with three leaves off of the top. And it puts off one, one to two flowers that grow into a fruit that looks a lot like an apple. Uh, we call them horse apples around here. And I looked it up recently, but I don't remember what the actual botanical name is for it. It's one of the most poisonous plants in, in North America. Um, uh, not very much of the sap from this thing will make you very sick, and a little bit more will kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the native people here used to use it as a medicinal plant to cure um, parasitical worms, uh, intestinal worms, that sort of thing, in very, very small amounts. Uh, but that apple, that, that little fruit that grows off of it, makes a really good pie, believe it or not. And you can eat the fruit, but you have to know exactly when to pick it. If you pick it at the wrong time, too early, it can kill you. So if you see a plant that I'm describing, do not try to eat the fruit off of it unless you have done your research and you know exactly when to pick the thing. So I'm not going to be responsible if you poison yourself. <laughs> um, well, I've showed you the, the country around here. How about I show you myself? And I'm going to turn this camera around. Don't be too startled when you see me. I know I'm ugly. Anyway, hi. That's me. Uh, I would. I wish people would come and see this part of Texas more often. Um, we uh, we live in a beautiful country around here. The 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 land and the the this, the amount of oh I don't know I'm lost for words. Uh, this is a wonderful place to live if you don't mind being out far away from uh, urban areas. Now there are a few towns up around here that are 30, 40,000 population, but this is where I live. And I would take my helmet off, but I'm sure my hair would look pretty bad, what's left of it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching the couple of videos that I've uh, filmed here. So uh, thank you, and maybe I'll do some more soon. Thanks.